We are in the midst of the biggest public health crisis in the history of the world. And nobody even gets it. Nobody understands how important this is. Because they don't consider it public health. They consider it personal responsibility. The question is, what has happened to change this so completely? Well, everybody says, obesity is, you eat too much, you exercise too little. It's your fault. You know what? I take care of obese six-month-olds, and it ain't their fault. And sugar has very specific effects that drive these phenomena, that drive insulin resistance, that drive excessive consumption. It's for this reason we took on the question of is sugar consumption underlying this pandemic of chronic metabolic disease, of which obesity is a feature, not the cause. And I'll never forget the day that you came into my office at UCSF, and Claire had sent you my way, and you said, I run the Childhood Obesity Clinic here, and I'm an endocrinologist, and what can you tell me about how to, you're a sociologist, you spent the last 30 years studying alcohol, and illicit drugs and addiction. What can you teach me? And for one thing, that never happens in medical schools. You know, why, you work on the cell, I work on the society. And it took me a while to even wrap my head around how similar alcohol and sugar or fructose are in terms of the harms that they cause to human health. And I don't think the message that you got from us was what you probably expected. Because most people think, oh, well, you're going to control sugar. Well, that means, you know, what, is that like alcohol? You have to prohibit it? You're, isn't that the government meddling in people's choice? And we told you, no, that's not, the, that's not what works, and that's not what people want. What works is gentle, moderate, ways of shaping the availability of the substance so that everywhere you go it isn't the only choice. Most of the conversation that's going on right now about soda taxation that's going around the country, really around the world, is how much can we tax it to generate money for programs? And those programs then could potentially then go back and maybe help be preventative. But no one's really talking about how much tax will it take to reduce consumption. We saw, we saw this with cigarettes. We basically had to raise the price of a pack up right. to $11 in New York City to get people to actually stop smoking. They, when they finally decided, you know what, the craving just isn't worth it. So the question is, how much taxation would you have to do to a can of soda to get somebody to say, you know, I really don't need to do that. And that's been done. It's been yeah. looked at. It's been modeled. The problem is, you're going to have to double it. Now, no one's ready for that today. But you know what? They weren't ready for an $11 pack of cigarettes either. Yeah, and, and also some of these strategies that we're proposing, even though they may seem a bit out of uh, the mainstream, in reality there have been a lot of other public health campaigns at, which initially seemed to be very radical. But today, they seem extremely mainstream. So when we think about using a designated driver at a, at a party so we really reduce who is at risk when they get behind the wheel, or when we talk about smoking and the fact that we're not going to have secondary smoke in our buildings, or when we think about condom distribution. All of these ideas took a real yeah. concerted social will, social change, to have this kind of public health And now they're impact. taken for granted. In fact, a lot of this has been stoked by the food industry, very specifically for their own purposes. Obviously, they don't want a soda tax, no way, no how, because that might actually you know, cut into their profits. So you see a lot of... Um, uh, political action committees and uh, Center for Consumer Freedom and things like that, um, you know, generating most of the buzz in terms of this. But the fact of the matter is, we're talking about saving billions of dollars, potentially, in terms of the amount of money that's spent on non-communicable chronic metabolic disease in this country. $147 billion a year is on the table right now. And the question is, are you going to let them make the money while you end up paying in, or are we all going to save? 
And that's where we are today. And ultimately, society has to make that decision, but they can only make it as a conscious decision and only with the data.